Welcome back virtual car and virtual reality fanatics to the Gamer Muscle YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to be telling you some of the best cars in Project Cars 2 to run on public servers in order to guarantee good, close, exciting multiplayer racing with people you don't know and people of varying skill levels. Now the reason I'm making this video is because if you go onto the public lobbies in Project Cars 2, you'll find that Project Cars 2 suffers from GT3-itis, which has afflicted many public lobbies in many simulators, where basically if a simulator has GT3 cars for some reason, that's all anybody wants to run. Got 14 million cars to choose from? No, nope. we're just going to do GT3 at Spa for the next two years. Okay, so our first car, and this is a beast of a car when it comes to public server racing or just racing with friends, is the Clio Cup. And, you know, you might dismiss this car initially because you're like, it's front-wheel drive, and front-wheel drive cars are what you do your shopping in. And uh, let's face it, it doesn't exactly look as sleek as a Formula One car. But you, my friend, would be mistaken because this car is an absolute beast. And its beasty nature comes in the fact that the back end of this car is essentially a shopping trolley with banana skins that are mounted upon soap. Fortunately, you can negate these soap banana tyres by just putting a brick on the accelerator pedal. So if you're coming to this new and you're totally clueless, put your foot on the accelerator pedal and it'll bail you out of most situations. Where this car gets really interesting though is for those of you that want to put more time into it and those of you that actually want to get good with it, it's really fun trying to balance the car on the grip and balance the back end of the car with the throttle pedal. It's kind of like a back to front vehicle, which is, you know, not a surprise because it's front wheel drive rather than rear wheel drive. And where I think a lot of slower cars just lose the appeal to more experienced sim racers, this has enough depth to it that it keeps you coming back to it, especially in the context of rather crowded, somewhat precarious, somewhat crazy, public server racing where you're trying to balance the back of the car be neat and tidy with your steering inputs all whilst trying to overtake another car that's apparently being drunk by someone completely inebriated now we've done thorough scientific testing and have probably spent about 15 hours or so driving this car when we do our streams which are typically at 7 p.m subscribe if you want to catch them and uh, we've, we've just had absolutely amazing races with this vehicle with incredible close close side-by-side -side action, battling for position at the front, trying to get those passes in before corners, during corners, and trying not to get penalised by uh, crazy whiting that they've got in this game. Absolutely amazing. Guys, do 10-lap sprint races with this car instead of GT3, and uh, you know, you'll, you'll be having a better time. I guarantee you'll be having a better time. This is the all-round best car in Project Cars 2 for accommodating a wide-skilled group of players and just guaranteeing, as likely as possible, that you're going to minimise the tick winkling and uh, have decent racing. Cleo Cup, the champion car for Project Cars 2. Now on to the next one. The KTM Crossbow. Granted, it has more understeer than a cruise ship and it's about as um, responsive as a 90s dial-up modem. But with that lack of response and the monumental amounts of understeer comes a nice, safe, drivable car. And it does have a reasonable amount of speed to it and it still has a good degree of nuance to keep it engaging for those of you that have a little bit more talent. Crucially, and ultimately, again, it accommodates drivers of different skill and it allows for rather compacted, close, exciting, 10 or so lap sprint racing. I think the biggest aspect of this car is that it's probably the easiest to drive rear wheel drive vehicle in Project Cars 2. So it's a fantastic introduction car to rear, rear wheel drive. But also a really nice character of this vehicle is that because it's so stable, if you have a little bit of car contact and you bang on some doors and you get tit winkled occasionally, you'll actually be able to recover from it and continue on. It's a lot less likely with this car that someone knocking into you will totally ruin you for the entirety of a race even a sprint race another bonus with the old crossbow is that it's a h pattern car so with again we, we keep saying stability i sound like the current conservative government strong and stable strong and stable but nonetheless because of its stability 
you can completely butcher your H pattern shifting with this car and still get away with it. So again, it's a really good introduction to using a H pattern shifter, getting that clutch action going and maybe even getting some heel and toe goodness in there. You'll see in the video above, I'm just driving into everybody. I, I you know, I, this, this video was done in, in rather a hurry. Don't drive like this when you're driving online. These are AI, it's all fine. I'm not going to get to comment about this, whatever I say, so I don't know why I bother. But there you go, KTM Crossbow, second on the list. Fantastic car, a little bit bland, but that blandness is more than made up with for the close online racing that you'll get from it, as well as the rather nice force feedback that this vehicle delivers. And lastly, mostly because this is just a top three public server car video, there's more than three good cars for public service in this game, but because we're trying to keep this video less than 14 years long, lastly, the Radical SR3 and the Radical SR8. Both of these cars are absolutely superb, and in my opinion, both of them drive better than all of the GT3 cars that are in Project Cars 2. And... They are also more conducive to good, fun online racing. Now, especially worth noting, if you've got a VR headset, drive these radicals, your face will melt and explode, and uh, though you'll be hospitalised, it will have been totally worth it. These cars are superb. They've, they've got absolute bags of grip around uh, high-speed corners, so you can take them and use them at tracks like Silverstone, um, Spa, some of the longer tracks where you actually need faster cars to really enjoy them, Red Bull Ring, you know, the SR8 is perfect for those circuits, whereas if you're taking the Clio Cup and the uh, KTM Crossway to those circuits, you, you will literally die of old age before completing half a lap. So the SR8 is fantastic if you want to drive those tracks, but still have something that is moderately easy to drive and um, not too tricky for most people to approach. The nice thing with these cars is Though they do start to get to that more racy, ginormous testicles required to drive them in real life specification, they have very controllable slip over the limit. You can put it back. They're not as controllable, of course, as stuff like the Ginetta, the KTM Crossbow, and uh, the Clio and some of the other lower vehicles. But they're on another level of forgiveness to any of the Formula cars and actually many of the GT cars that are found on a lot of the public service. I think the biggest thing that makes the Radicals easy to drive, apart from the high speed grip, is just that they're, they're very literal. They, Again, the force feedback is very communicative of what grip you've got. You, you point it in the direction you want to go, you push the accelerator, and off it goes. You've also got the advantage of the old flappy paddles, which takes away complexity and confusion from using a, a H pattern or other more complex methods of changing gear, for those of you with three brain cells. Uh, wait, you can't go wrong with it. If you want something fast, the SR8. If you want something a little bit more forgiving and maybe to drive on the more windier British tracks, which are bloody fantastic circuits, then go for the SR3. Maybe you're crazy. Throw some random weather in there as well. And uh, it, it just makes... It's a spice of life. But there you go, guys. I think, uh, in my opinion... As I say, there's plenty of cars in Project Cars 2 that are good for public servers, that will be conducive to good online racing, but this video highlights three cars that if you use them, you will, I, 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 I'd say 99% of the time, if you use these cars on your public server, you will have better quality online racing than if you go for GT3. Other things worth mentioning and what I've tested out from our online streams, which we've done far too much of, Set the safety rating to D, that seems to filter out people that apparently have detached the brake pedal from their sim rigs and generally you will still get tear winkled, there'll still be ridiculous crashes and T1 incidents, especially on tracks like Monza and Spa, but generally D seems to be the sweet spot for letting people in but reducing a lot of those unwanted crashes and uh, I definitely think as well 6 to 10 laps um, absolutely fantastic format for these cars it's not too much it's not too little it's enough to kind of catch up a bit it's but it's enough to if you're having a good race it will keep going for a little bit it, it's just a good compromise setting between the uh, the options that are there and the type of racing that you get in public servers but uh, all, all in all i hope this video has been useful for you guys i hope this uh, dr muscle has uh inoculated vaccinated and uh, uh, thrown in the dustbin 
the, the notion that every single server has to be GT3. What is wrong with people? I don't know. I can't explain it. Maybe just maybe people are dropped on the head as a baby. I don't know. But give these cars a go. You'll have fun, I guarantee it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button. And uh, as I say, we normally stream at 7 p.m. most nights. We don't really have much of a life at this point in time, so that's why we're doing that. And we're often playing Project Cars 2, Seto Corsa, Race Room, and we're going to be doing more VR in the future as well. So check us out for that. Goodbye, everybody. Have fun.